Thank you so very much. What a beautiful day it is to worship our Lord and Savior. Our scripture this morning is Psalm 30. I invite you to listen for a word or a phrase that speaks to you this day. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you God's faithful ones, and give thanks to God's holy name. For God's anger is but for a moment. God's favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, we are in the midst of this series on the fruits of the Spirit, and today, very fittingly, is joy. Now, I do want to distinguish that there is a difference between happiness and joy. Going through the self-help section in the bookstore, one can find lots of books about happiness and finding happiness. A quick Google search tells me that one website, bless their hearts, summarized over a thousand books on happiness, and they found the 12 that will make me the happiest. It's a lot of research. Or if I want to be happier, I can consider these other 33 books sorted by category, according to another web page. Now, I'm not trying to say that books on happiness are trash. I'm not really trying to throw shade on that. That's not really my concern. My concern is that we are a society obsessed with being happy and believing that we have to do something to be happy or achieve something or succeed in something to be happy. When friends, the joy we experience through God in Christ is so much deeper and foundational and does not depend on external forces or events or material wealth or accomplishments. Here our psalmist again, weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. You, God, have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. This joy that the Bible speaks of is not a saccharine happiness. It's not a joy that denies the very real suffering and sorrow of life. There is a real difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is often described as something that is dependent upon external forces. We will be happy when something around us is different or if we take some action or make some lifestyle change or make a certain amount of money or have a certain job or buy the right things. But joy is so much deeper than that. It's rooted in our faith in the living God who resurrected Jesus from the dead and promises us that no matter the weeping we experience in the darkest night, 
that joy comes. God removes our sackcloth and clothes us in joy. I recently started subscribing to a daily devotion by Morgan Harper Nichols, and the quote that came up the other day was this. On the most ordinary days, may you find this to be true. Even in the smallest ways, joy is waiting for you. She writes this, the more we live, the more we learn to make room for the shadowy parts of life. We learn to hold space for what is difficult to understand, and we accept what we cannot control. However, we must remember that as we learn to accept the way things are, that doesn't mean we can't still make room for the light. We may have to witness the darkness, but the shadows don't outweigh the joy no matter how heavy it is to navigate. Happiness, with its dependence on external forces, does not always make a place for the shadows. Joy, with its foundation in God and Christ, well, it does. And y'all, we know how hard it can be to navigate the shadows. A friend of mine recently showed me this picture that she calls Spaghetti Baby, fittingly so. <laughs> it's a picture of a baby with spaghetti all over themselves and the bowl upside down on top of their head. She has it framed as a poster with the psalm underneath, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> the Spaghetti Baby is a visual reminder that life does not always go the way we want it to. Sometimes we are in a very real mess. Sometimes, yes, the world is a massive dumpster fire. Sometimes what is supposed to be right side up is upside down. And it's not just the daily inconveniences of life, like a parking ticket or a spill in the kitchen or a Zoom call that's really glitchy. It's deeper than that. It's chaos and war and tragedy and violence and disaster and illness. We are broken people living in a broken world. The traumatizing and tragic realities of a violent society and a violent world can make talking about joy feel simplistic and out of touch, maybe even insensitive or offensive. But one thing that joy is not, it's not toxic positivity, right? One definition of toxic positivity is this, the overgeneralization of a happy, optimistic state that results in the denial, minimization, and invalidation of the authentic human emotional experience. Dr. Susan David, author of Emotional Agility, says that toxic positivity is this forced false positivity. It may sound innocuous on the surface, she says, but when you share something difficult with someone and they insist that you turn it into a positive, what they're really saying is, my comfort is more important than your reality. Psalm 30 is not toxic positivity. The psalmist reminds us that weeping is real, that mourning and grief are real, that being rooted in the joy of God is not denying the depths of our pain. Y'all, this is a God who experienced nails and thorns and walked the lonesome valley, but darkness did not have the final word. That's what our joy is rooted in. It's not in good vibes only and the power of positivity. There's nothing wrong with those things, but the promise that we find in the resurrected Christ is foundational for our faith and how we live a life of joy. 
in the midst of grieving and mourning and this never-ending rat race or climb to the top, the regular stuff of life that wears on us and tears us down, we're able to find joy in God's faithfulness and goodness. We're able to find joy when we know that the shadows are not the finish line and that God calls us out of the darkness to love and serve and sing and dance and make a joyful noise. So what does joy look like in your life? What does joy feel like? What does joy sound like? For me... It's time that I just got to spend with my nephews in Texas. The 11-year-old running to jump into my arms when I pull up to the house. The 10-year-old telling me I'm cool and being really impressed with my skills at catch. It's the 7-year-old snuggling close as we read stories and say goodnight. It's the 6-year-old telling me he wants to marry me when he grows up. Joy is being with my mom at one of my most favorite places together in the Texas Hill Country. Joy is the beach day with the young adult group yesterday, laughing and soaking up the sun, feeling gratitude and contentment. Joy is serving at the food bank on Thursday mornings and seeing people I care about with bags overflowing with fresh produce. Joy is God chasing after me with scriptures that I need to hear with hugs from beloveds. It's the speechless tears brought forth by our beautiful choir and our worship music. Joy is a song and a smile and a thoughtful text. Joy is looking through the photos in my phone of family and friends and feeling my heart swell with love. Joy is the assurance in God's goodness and faithfulness that through Jesus' life, death and resurrection we are not alone or forsaken or abandoned that God turns our mourning into dancing removes the sackcloth the weight of grief and burden of our trauma and tragedy and clothes us with joy 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 many people have read the book of joy with Archbishop Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama. The insight into their friendship is delightful. Their interviewer, Douglas Abrams, says, the more we turn towards others, the more joy we experience. And the more we experience, the more we can bring joy to others. The goal is not just to create joy for ourselves, but as the archbishop poetically phrased it, to be a reservoir of joy that can ripple out to all those around you. It comes from within, and it goes out. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Amen.